Okay, here I'm going to show how to mount the AR7100 um, uh, RPM sensor. Okay, first you'll notice that the, the bracket, actually it's removable as you see, uh, but it slides up and down on the plastic here, and there's two threaded holes on this side. Okay, so let me put this back together. The idea being for different size engines, YS91, OS91, OS50, etc., etc., and I can't get it back on there one second. Ah, bear with me here. Okay, anyway, there's also two holes up here, and you can slide this up and down until the holes line up uh, to where you need. So the idea being is remove these two bottom screws, okay, hold the sensor in place, and push it down so it's touching the back of the back plate of the motor. Okay, then take it out carefully and look at which holes line up. For my OS91, it's going to be this hole right here at the bottom of this slotted uh, hole, okay? Put your little screw in there, tighten it up, recheck that the sensor is touching the back plate, and then simply um, uh, in the kit was the, not only with the screw, was two washers. Washers go on top of the plate, and relock tight your screws that hold the back plate on, and you're done. So go, I'm going to go ahead and do that. We'll come back and review the installation. Okay, so there we have it. Again, screws, washers on the top, sensors touching the back plate. By the way, on, my, on mine, I was able to get at the screw here so I could uh, loosen it, push down, make sure sensors touching and, and tighten it. Um, so you can do that that way too. All right, so we need to test the sensor, but before we test the sensor, I need to go into calibration and calibrate the, uh, the governor, teach it the low and high throttle points, that kind of thing, and, um, or the rev limiter. And then we'll come back and turn the motor over and check that the sensor is being read, uh, reading the crankcase. Okay? So that finishes hardware installation. We'll come back and do software setup. Okay, before we can calibrate uh, the rev limiter on the uh, AR7100R receiver, we need to have certain things set up in our radio. Um, so let me go into the power on menu. And I'm going to go over to device select. Okay, so one of the first things is the, the gear channel must be used to set your uh, RPMs for your rev limiter. You have no choice on that. You can't make it aux to anything else. So they want the gear, the gear channel on that receiver is used to do that. So what you want to do is you could just leave it, uh, instead of setting it to gov, you could, you know, just have your gear switch if you wanted to change between your RPMs, all right? However, using governor menu by going down here and setting this instead of inhibit, uh, to, and instead of activate, but to governor. This will allow you to use the governor menu in the radio and have three different RPMs depending on your idle up switch. Okay, so you want to do that. Now for gain for um, gain for uh, uh, the gyro, you're gonna we're gonna be using aux two. Okay, so we don't. I'm not gonna go into that here because this is uh, for the rev limiter. But go ahead and set that to gov because that is the way I will be doing it. All right. So once you got that set. Let's go back into the main uh, menus now, and we want to go to travel adjust. Now, here's a couple key points. You want your travel adjust for throttle as close to 100 to 100 as you can get it, okay? In my T-Rex 700 build, I, sh I showed I was able to get that. Right now, these are my actual endpoints for my T-Rex 700. By moving the ball around on the servo and getting it right, my low stick is basically close to idle. I may, when I finally fire up the engine, I may probably have to lower the lower limit a little bit, but it'll be darn close to 100. What you don't want is these things something weird like, you know, 50 over here and 130 or uh, even some low numbers like 50 or 50. It means your ball spacing on your servo is not right. So it's important that you have that as close as possible. Okay, and then before we can go into calibration, uh, what you need to do is you need to also go over to your Gov menu, okay, and you need to set uh, normal to 100 and at stunt 1 to minus 100, okay? You can also set stunt 2 to minus 100. What that's going to do is we're going to be toggling, when we power up, we're going to be toggling this switch like this. And they, the, the, the rev limiter and the receiver needs to see 100, 100 toggle. So these have to be 100 and 100 toggle. Okay, to verify that that is working, let's go over to the monitor, okay? And when we go into the monitor, you will see here is the gain channel. By the way, it's dashed out because we're set for governor. And it usually would say gear here, uh, but it's dashed out. But you can see the, 
the uh, I'm getting a little glare here. You can see where it is right now. Now I'm going to switch into stunt one. See that it goes all the way over to the other side. Okay, so verify you are getting that operation. If you're not getting that operation, you're not going to be cali be able to calibrate the rev limiter, or it's going to confuse it. It needs to learn 100% each direction, so then it also knows when you make changes in the gov menu that between those hundred uh, 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 ends that things are working, that you can set certain numbers. If you had these reduced for some reason, then chances are you might not even be able to achieve the RPM you want, okay? So make sure this is right. All right, so that concludes setting up the radio. We've got it set up for calibration. So we're gonna go ahead now, pull up the helicopter, and do the calibration. Okay, for calibration, I'm gonna make a uh, point out here. You'll see the green act uh, signal and the red sense signal. These are LEDs that are on the side of this unit. So now I'm going to roll it over on its side so we can see those LEDs. Okay, pardon me, my strap's in the way. All right, so what we're going to do now is turn your transmitter on. All right, have it on and be ready because when we turn on and link up, we're going to be toggling this uh, a couple times within three seconds of sync up of the receiver. Sometimes you miss it, sometimes it's hard to get. I may miss it a couple times. Um, but let me go ahead and get my finger on the switch and we'll turn on. There we go. And I caught it. You see it is blinking green. That means calibration. Now what we want to do is we want to lower our trim or whatever we're using for a throttle cut and lower it until the throttle's fully closed. Alright, so with that, now what we're going to do is we're going to go all the way up, okay, all the way down. I think you only have to do it once, but I'm going to go all the way up again. And that teaches the, uh, the rev limiter your full throttle stick throw, which is important. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take it out of calibration by toggling the switch. Okay, there we go. Now, this verifies operation. You see I'm at full throttle. The activate light is on. If I come below 20%, the activate light goes out. Okay, so above 20%, it's on, below, off. Of course, if I go into idle up, if I've got a curve, I go into hold, it's off, okay, et cetera, et cetera. So that shows that you've calibrated the throttle. You can return your trim to center, okay, and there we go. Now, let's verify operation of the sensor. And as you see, I have my sensor mounted, okay, and it's all mounted in there. Now, the, there's a red LED that says sense. So if I rotate my motor, when the crank pin crosses the sensor, we should get a red light. So I'm rotating my motor right now. And there we go, we got a red light. Okay, when I rotate a little farther, light should go out. Okay, there we go. All right, finger's a little tough to get in there. All right, so basically rotate again. Crank sensor, crank rod comes over the sensor. Okay, on, rotate it off on, off, on, off, just like so, alright? That's basically it. The sensor is reading the crank and we know we've got it mounted correctly and installed. Okay, so that basically covers calibration and setup and checking of the rev limiter. In a minute I'll come back and we'll talk about how you change your uh, uh, RPM settings.